Hello everyone and welcome to SE Geek, the internet's most passionate software engineering show. I'm your host of Software Engineering Geek, and in this show we're going to show you how to branch in Git. So sit back and let the knowledge flow in because SE Geek begins now. Okay, in this video, we're going to be talking about branching. I've talked about this and touched on this just a little bit before, but in a Git repository, so let's go to Git, well, actually, let's go back to our Grails repository and do a Git K. So as i shown you, you know, there's, you know, you can branch off and merge back and things like that. So we're going to do this same thing in our little test repository. So let's go back to our test repository. And first thing we're going to do is we're going to do get branch. So as we see, we have just one branch, which is called master. So that's all and good. We can also do a get branch dash a and we see all we have is master as well whereas if we did this say on the grails repository did a get branch dash a we see something a little different so there's a whole bunch of branches these are remote branches which we haven't even looked at so you know this is uh you know these are different branches you know that we haven't actually even checked out that aren't local. But if we wanted to, what we could do is we could do a get checkout. Uh, let's see. Let's do 1.1.x. One dot one dot Oops. Might help if I do a check out. So checkout is the way to switch between one branch and another. And we didn't have this branch originally on ours, but it took the remote branch and made that branch for us. So now we have that 1.1 branch. The remote branch is just, uh, or its origin branch, is just its way of uh, knowing, like, you know, what's changed or keeping track of what's changed between, you know, your branch and your remote branch. So it's kind of like under the hood. Uh, and you can set up remotes uh, specifically. I generally don't mess with this so much I just do what's called a get fetch which let's uh, show you that get fetch which you know fetches down all of the remote uh, branches and all of the remotes you know things that have changed and you know just updates all of the you know gets background indexes so doing a get fetch just by itself is usually just a good idea for syncing you know it doesn't it doesn't change any of your local branches, but it changes the metadata so it knows, you know, get knows what's changed between your branch and the remote branches. So now, um, you know, obviously this branch hasn't changed any, but uh, let's just do a clear. And we're on this particular branch, which is fine. So if we actually, if we do a get K on this branch, You'll see it looks a little different because, you know, it's it's a different branch. Different things happened on this. This is actually a very old branch because all this stuff happened in 2009. So if we wanted to get back to our original branch, so we wanted to get back to master, we could go a get check out master. And we switch back to the master branch. So... Let's see, and it says that our origin master branch has diverged because we made a commit and, you know, we're actually ahead, well, actually, we have one commit that's in the middle of your theirs, which, you know, was our fake, you know, little commit, which we won't be committing, but uh, let's go back to our actually test repository, so, and... Oops, let's see, CD test. Okay, so we have this master branch here, 
and we want to do some experimental work. Uh, so you can do uh, get branch, I think it's dash dash help, I don't remember what it is because I never do it this way, but uh, you can, let's see, how do you create a new branch? I think you just use the new name and it creates it, or is there an actual switch for it? I don't know. I actually never do it this way. I, I'll show you the way I do it, which is uh, what I do is, you know, how we use the checkout command. I just do a get check, oops, checkout, and then do the dash B option, which will make a new branch and actually check it out at the same time. Because, you know, you can create a branch and then not check it out, which I think seems silly usually when you create a new branch you want to change to it immediately so that's what this command will do so now we have a new branch and it's saying m2 all right so let's do a get status because we had this one file that was modified but not committed so when you create a new branch or when you move from one branch to another uncommitted changes will sometimes can follow you around a lot of times Git will stop you from doing this um, and say you have to commit before you know we move on. And I'll show you you know some ways around that later. But you know this file actually moved with us. And you know say we didn't want to commit it on it. You know we want to have this be our you know test. So let's do a Git GUI. And you know this is our seven eight. We're putting this on a test branch and we're you know testing adding. 7 and 8. So those were just, you know, two lines that we added to this file. Commit that. So now we have one commit on our test branch. So if we do a get k here, we'll see that we have one commit. And we'll see master, which is, you know, this is the master branch, and that's where it's pointing. But we're, you know, one commit ahead. So... What we want to do now is we want to, you know, let's, uh, let's see, let's uh, edit, edit test two, and we just want to add nine, ten, delete one, save that. Close that, do a git GUI just to add some more changes. And we'll stage this and adding. Now I'll actually show you this adding eight, nine, one. You'll see that it, you know, one of the great things about Git, especially in Linux, by default, you get spell check. So if you right click, it'll actually spell check your commits for you and do the nice little underline, which is nice. There is a little bit more to do on to get this to work on Windows, which uh, I might show in a future tutorial. We'll we'll see. <laughs> All right. So now we have those two commits. So. If we now do a get checkout, checkout master, so we switch back to master, and if we do a get k, we'll notice those two commits are gone, but say we want to actually merge those in. Um, actually, that's topic for another tutorial, like because there's a lot more things that you can do with this. But, you know, we could actually p merge those in like you saw in, you know, uh, the other repository. But there are some uh, issues, which I'm going to show you in another tutorial. But let's uh, do uh, just to set that up. Let's edit test two. And we're going to remove... Three, we're going to add one, two. So now we have some divergent changes here. Get 
um, get GUI. Add any, um, changes. Huh. It can't be. <laughs> oh, well. Commit. So. All right. So now actually let's do a get log and do from master dot dot test. So this shows me the two uh, commits that we made between master and test. But if I wanted to see the other way around, I could do from test to master and you know we get a different view of what's actually happened. So kind of flips it around. Um, so let's clear that up and that's pretty much the basics of, you know, doing branches. Uh, let's do actually do a get branch again so we can see our branches. Um, we can also actually, let's do a get branch test two, is it? All right. So that if I do a get branch. Now I have test two. Um, if you want to delete a branch, we can do a get branch, and you can do a dash D, lowercase d, or a dash capital D. There is a difference. Uh, if something is in a, an unmerged state, which you know we're talking about merging in another tutorial, but if it's in, oops, branch, in an unmerged state, get d will like throw an error and tell you you can't do this because you know it's an unmerged state you know bad things could happen but you can force it with a capital d be careful about that so usually lowercase d just to be safe um and we're going to get rid of test 2 branch now the thing about this is is even though we're deleting the branch we're not really deleting the changes that happened in that branch. Now this test two branch, we didn't do anything in, but even if we did, the, those changes aren't really deleted from the repository. So you could get back to them. It just deletes the pointer, which the branch is just like, kind of like a tag is a pointer to a SHA, but it changes with every commit on that branch. So, you know, just deleting it doesn't get rid of those, you know, those SHAs. Those are always part of, you know, history. Um, so, you know, in theory, you can get back to them. Uh, in practice, it's a little harder when you real when you delete a branch. But in theory, if you know a SHA, you can always get back to that point in time. And this is, you know, another uh, thing about uh, branches is their SHAs. So, you know, you get to know that... Uh, you know, I'll just run this and it shows it's deleted. So now if I do a get branch here, I see just those two. Now, another thing is I'm going to um, do a get checkout test. So now we're on the test branch again and do a get checkout dash B test two. So what this is going to do is get it make a branch based on the current branch I'm on and check it out. So now we're on test two and go to get K. So now we have you know this particular you know version of the repository. What I can do that and I showed you before is I can do a reset. So I can reset to a particular branch to a particular point in time. So if I want this branch to say go back in time to right here, I can reset right here. And it gives me these options. Now I haven't really talked too much about reset, but I'm going to be talking about it more in depth in another tutorial. Uh, hard is usually one of the ways to go when I do a, when I do a reset, I usually do a hard reset just because it clears things out. But there are some, uh, you know, there is a case for soft, which will actually 
instead of uh, reverting the change, uh, you know, getting rid of the changes, it'll actually leave the changes um, uncommitted. And then there's mixed, which uh, leaves working untouched and resets the index. But so for our, our cases, we're going to do hard. Whoop. And I don't know why that did that. But now test two is here. So it kind of went back in time to an earlier version of you know that branch. So now if we look at test, it's up here. Test two is way down here at this particular commit. So I just moved that point at the point of that branch to a different point in time, which is something you can do. Now, like I said before, you don't want to be resetting any, you know, doing a reset like this um, with anything that you've pushed out. So you don't want to, you know, reset into, uh, you know, a point in time that's previous to when you actually, you know, pushed or published something to a central repository because it can get you into merge problems. Uh, kind of like, you know, it's kind of like going back in time and changing history. It can get you in trouble if you don't know what you're doing. Uh, so, some of those, you know, things apply in the get world as well. So just keep that in mind. Um, but that's pretty much, you know, the basics about branching. So... I guess that's it for now.